We're going to do something a little bit different this week. We're going to try and learn from previous photography mistakes. This is a great exercise. I think every photographer should do every now and then. Just go back and look at some of your old photos, work out what worked, work out what didn't work, what would you do differently, how would you do it differently, why were you making certain choices at the time, and how maybe you've learned from that and you'd make different choices now. This can be a great way to identify problems that no longer exist, great, but also problems that you still feel you want to conquer. And that makes you a little bit more aware of them when you go out and take photos, makes you a little bit more aware of them so that you don't do them. You're actively trying to avoid them going forward. And overall just makes us all better photographers. So we're gonna look at some of my old photos. We're gonna look at some of my mistakes, how I've learned from them. Let's get into it. It's Tutorial Tuesday. <laughs> Welcome back to Tutorial Tuesday, where each week, each and every Tuesday, we bring in a brand new, fresh, although some of these photos, not so fresh, if I'm honest with you, but fresh photography tutorial. This week, like I say, no different. We are going to try and learn from some of my previous photography mistakes. Now, I take a lot of photos. I do it for my job, obviously. I review cameras. We do tutorials every week. All that fun stuff. I also do some client work on the side here and there. I do little bits. I go take photos for fun as well. You know, sometimes I actually just do it to enjoy myself, <laughs> which is which is great. Still going to get out and do that every now and then. Let's take a look. I've imported some photos into Lightroom, which we're going to take a look at. These are photos taken over the last few years. Now, I've moved a few computers around over the last few years, right? So I have unfortunately lost several different photos, which I actually immediately thought of when it came to doing this video, including from certain events. Now, some of those photos, maybe I wouldn't wanna show on this video just because they're quite personal to certain people. And it's not really necessarily my place to then showcase that and show the world how I did a bad job. But let me tell you, there are certain event photos that I learned a lot from. There are really obvious things, cutting people's kind of legs, arms, limbs off, wherever it might be, at the joint by actually cropping in a terrible way, cropping people out of photos using a terrible depth of field when you're shooting a group photo. So using f2.8 because, oh, it's dark in here. But then certain people are out of focus. Now, can I brighten it up in post? Absolutely. But can I re-pull the focus in post? Not so much. So I went for a bad choice. I went for the exposure over the focus and there's not much you can do about the focus afterwards. So I learned a few things doing things like weddings and other events. But let's dive into some photos that I do have that were taken even all the way back to 2017, which, if you can believe this, was seven years ago. That is wild. Let's have a look. So first up, this is a picture of my dog, Pepsi, running on the beach. Now, it's not the worst thing I've ever seen, but the closer you look, the more you start to realize it's maybe not ideal. So for example, he's actually not in focus. I focused on his back legs rather than on his face and his eyes. I've tried to sharpen that up in post but it's not really worked out very well. So he's actually out of focus. Not a great start, right? I think that's probably because of where I've put the focus point. Still not ideal. Number two, the framing is a little bit weird anyway. Now I was at this point probably obsessed with the rule of thirds, so I've popped him over to the left. But really, even if I was gonna do that, I would probably pop him over to the right so that we don't cut his shadow off. But I would imagine that now, the way I would take this photo is to actually just put him in the center and even if I was to crop this now, I think probably, let's unlock it. I think probably I would do more of something like, something like this. Again, though, I might try and get the shadow in so it's not fully sort of just cut off like that. And then I've colored it with a very sort of yellow and blue coloring, which I imagine was something I was very excited about at the time. But now I probably, you know, would maybe go for a slightly more subtle, uh, a slightly more subtle color grade, maybe. I've gone very heavy on the contrast as well. There's not much I'm gonna be able to do to that. But the main problem here is the focus. He's out of focus, but I've still chosen to showcase this photo at one point, which is why I've still got it, even though his face is out of focus. Definitely quite a lot to learn from there. I would just not take the photo in this way, but I probably learned that quite quickly, which is good. On to the next photo. Now, this was taken at a kind of a farm. It's actually like a, a business that sells all kinds of different things, but some of it is fencing and stuff like that. But they have chickens there, and I was doing some photos for them, and they wanted a photo of the chickens to use for a banner, and I was so happy with this photo. And the reason, the reason for that 
was because I was experimenting with depth of field and I couldn't believe how good having a blurred background looked and I thought that was awesome. However, when you look at it now, there's no defined subject. This chicken over on the left is in is in focus. But this chicken up front, no. This chicken, no. And then obviously all the other chickens, no. So this is probably taken... Oh, this was taken at F5. Wow. I, but I was very close up. And realistically, this is on a quite tight lens, I would imagine. So, I mean, 56 millimeters says there, but this was taken on APS-C camera. So it's unnecessarily zoomed in, probably. This framing is not good, but it's not necessarily too far off what could have been good. I just needed to have a defined subject. I don't think it was the worst thing in the world to actually use a zoomed in kind of look like this. I think that could have looked really good, but I did need to have one or even two defined subjects for the scene. Whereas as it is, there is no defined subject. May I think they did use it as a banner. So that's fine because it probably had text over it. So, I, and I guess that works and I guess that's fine. But looking back, would have done it very, very differently. And I think that's one of the biggest things I learned uh, kind of at that time was about having a defined subject in your scene, choosing the subject that will always make any photo, landscape, portrait, something like this, anything at all, that will always make it a better photo because then you're building the whole composition, the way you're taking the photo, the exposure, everything around the subject of the photo. It gives your viewer's eye a place to rest. We've talked about that in other tutorials, but this one, I didn't do that. Now, this photo, I'm actually still, to this day, really, really pleased with. I just like it. I like the composition. I like the way it's been kind of framed up. I actually don't even mind the coloring either. It's a little bit probably over-edited to what I would maybe do now. But then again, I don't know. I, I, do love a, I do love an edit. So maybe I'll still do something like this. But I'm actually really happy with that. Nothing really for me to critique on this one. I'd, I'd probably take it exactly the same. Exactly the same as I have done here. Now, this photo was taken in the New Forest. And actually, I am reasonably happy with it. I just probably would have done things a little bit differently if I was doing it now, I might have changed my angle a little bit to move to the side of the horse, possibly. But also, you know, again, you can see I'm obsessed with the rule of thirds. I've popped the horse on one of the vertical lines. Now, I probably would have, if I was going to do that, moved the pony over to the left side because then it's going to be facing into the image, which is going to be better. I probably would move slightly further away. That's another big lesson I learned through a lot of these photos and over time was I take photos way too tight. That was something I struggled with literally for years. I would always get in too tight and we're going to revisit that again in a minute. In fact, let's move straight on to this portrait where I've just taken that, I think, way too tight. Now that's not necessarily a bad thing. A nice close-up portrait can be really nice. We've got another one here as well. But I'm not doing it because of a creative choice. I'm just doing it because that's how I did every photo, just taking every photo really tight. Now, do I like a tight framing? Absolutely. And there is a great time and place for that. This is an 85 millimeter lens, f1.2, beautiful. But it doesn't always have to be super tight. And I think that's something that I've learned over the years is that sometimes pull back, go a little bit wider, just experiment a bit with the framing. It doesn't always have to be really tight like that. Even if you like a nice tight frame, just play around a little bit. It's not always the best end result. And you're giving yourself way less room to play around and both of these photos as well suffer from something else which I definitely struggle with for a while which is depth of field so you can see here Matilda one of her eyes is in focus the other eye is out of focus because we're shooting on an 85 millimeter lens f1.2 really close up so that 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 focus plane is just razor thin and there's no room for error there at all now this is another thing that I learned as well, is that just because you have an f1.2 lens, like in this case, doesn't mean you have to shoot at f1.2. If I'd pulled way back and shot a, a slightly wider portrait of Matilda and then shot it, you know, still 85mm, obviously, it's a prime lens, and then f1.2, I'm going to get a lovely bit of separation, lovely bit of blur background. That's going to look fantastic. But because I've shot it very close, focused on the eye, I've made that focal plane so shallow it's just very, very difficult to actually get kind of a decent shot because her one eye is in focus, one out is not ideal. So that's something I've learned. Either in this situation, now if I was taking it, if I want, need to take the same photo, I need to take a close-up face shot like this, I would almost definitely stop down. I'd keep stopping down, 
till I've got a, a nice, slightly deeper focal plane. Because it's still not going to be, you know, you're still going to get this incredibly blurred out background. I just want to get her other eye in focus. And that's something I'd focus on more, no pun intended, if I was taking the photo now. Same with this photo as well. I also much prefer the colouring on this one. It's much more natural, much more real. Whereas over here, I've gone for blue and maybe there's magenta in here and the skin tones are, you know, when you compare it to this, this one hands down for me is the one. This photo actually represents something a little bit different to me. This is one of my first ever attempts at doing astrophotography, something which I love doing now. I think it's so rewarding. It's so much fun. But my first ever attempt at it was perhaps not the best. It's not actually the worst thing I've ever seen in terms of the stars are kind of in focus almost. There is a little bit of streaking, I think, but it's not too bad. The composition is a bit weird with this bush, but again, it, it's there's elements to take from it, right? That you want a foreground. There, uh, something to kind of contrast against the sky. Now, I then ended up taking better photos and better photos and better photos, and I'm really happy with some of my Astro stuff that I've taken over the years now. But, you know, when you're starting like this, and the reason I wanted to show this photo is because, yes, it's not a particularly good Astro photo with the stars and the way it's framed and all the stuff. But it was one of my first ever attempts at doing it, and it's a reasonably hard genre. But what this showcases to me, and the reason I feel a bit differently about this photo, it showcases so much learning just from doing this. You go out and do it once, it's not great, but I learned so much. I learned so much about shutter speeds to use, about the stars streaking in the sky, focusing on the stars, the idea of having a foreground. And then I was able to take all of that the next time I went out and then the next time and then the next time. And that's how you get better, right? So while, yes, I look back at this photo and I think, sure, I'm not going to hang that on my wall. Actually, it means a lot to me because I learned so much from this one in particular for Astro stuff. Now, we've got a couple more portraits here. This one again of Matilda. I think this is probably a little bit tight again in terms of the uh, the crop. I also think, as you can see, I've gone rule of thirds. I've just popped her over on the left for no reason. There's no need to do that. Now I would definitely center this up. There's no need to have it any other way, I think. And I would also probably pull back a bit. Probably have blown out the highlights a little bit here as well in the editing. I've over edited it. It's oversaturated, but it's fine. You know, it's, it's again, it's, it's learning, right? Same with this portrait here. I think it's probably a little bit tighter than I wanted it to be. She's sitting on a bench in this sort of field of tall grass. You can't even see the bench, right? Ridiculous. Now I'd pull back, still use a nice sort of, you know, I think this is a 50 millimeter lens, f1.2. Great. That's lovely. It's too shallow, the depth of field, I think. That would be easily fixed by just pulling back. Still get a nice blurred background. Maybe I'd even stop down to f1.4, maybe even f1.8. But I've also messed up the, again, the colors, the highlights, it's all a bit messed up. I'd also probably approach things differently with the way the light is actually hitting her. So this is something which I learned and it took me a while to learn. I had already worked out at this point, great time to go out, take these sort of photos, is sunset. Fantastic. That's great. But then actually you have to do some work with positioning your model, with the angle you want to take the photo so that the light is hitting your model in the right kind of way. There's definitely stuff I would do differently now. I'd edit it differently. The colors would be different. I'd probably wait just another 15, 20 minutes so that it's even a little bit softer, the light. But I probably could have got, I probably could have got more out of this by the end of this. Now this photo perfectly showcases another thing I've learned from a lot of these kinds of photos, which is not to block your subject. So here the photo is of this Mexican one pot that actually Matilda made and I was doing kind of photos of it. And then I like shooting through, you know, plants, something like that. Great. Pop one of them in, actually try and theme everything around this actual dish. But the plant is just in the way of the food. So that's not, it's not ideal, is it? It doesn't, doesn't work out perfectly when the plant is just blocking the food. It looks nice. It's not, again, this isn't terrible, but this is something I would now change. Maybe have the plant coming across here, up here, but not blocking the actual food. And then finally, we've got this photo. Now, I did a bunch of photos for a company that sells sweets and fudge and popcorn and soft drinks and all that kind of stuff, right? They deliver it. Great, lovely stuff. And actually, it was a lot of fun to shoot a lot of their different stuff. And if we look at some of the other photos that I did, I'm really happy with a lot of these, right? It was it was a lot of fun to shoot these. It was very kind of creative, actually, surprisingly creative. And 
I really enjoy myself. However, there are some of the photos like this one to showcase the fudge where, you know, this was shot at what, f2.8. Now, the depth of field is just way too shallow. It's way too shallow. I'm quite close in. I've zoomed to 70 millimeters and I've shot at f2.8. And that means that there's so much out of focus that focal plane again is so shallow. And it's something that I've really learned now. Product photography, food photography, whatever it might be, you need to make sure things are in focus. That might mean stopping down. That might mean not zooming in as much, but actually moving the camera around. But really check that stuff before you finish the shoot. Take the photos and maybe in this situation, sure, take it at f2.8 if you want to. There's no need to though, right? I'm completely in control of the light. So from a light perspective, I don't need to. But I obviously wanted a blurred background, right? I wanted this color stuff to be nice and blurred and that's super fun. If I shoot this at f5.6, it's still going to be blurred. But then I'm going to have more of this fudge in focus. And I don't need all of it, right? Some of the foreground stuff is still going to be nice and out of focus. But it really is just a little bit of the fudge that's in focus. It's not even a whole square that's in focus. I'm haunted by this one a little bit because it's the one I think of every time I think of depth of field being wrong. But... What is great about that is I think about that every time I do a product photo now, every time I do food photography, anytime I do anything like this, whether it's for a client, whether it's for one of these videos, whatever it might be, I know I need to make sure the depth of field is correct. And that generally means things being in focus, not out of focus. So all of these examples of photos, I have learned a lot from making these mistakes. And making mistakes is great, to be honest. That's how you then become better, right? Especially when it comes to something like photography, it's super easy to then go back, look at them and think, why isn't this photo good? Identify why, and then know going forward to do things differently. That's a really, really helpful thing to do. It makes us all better photographers and showcasing hopefully some of my stuff that haunts me a little bit. These aren't too bad. There are some, which again, like I said, I don't even have anymore, which is a shame. That's how much I didn't like them. I mean, they, you know, they're the ones where I'm lying there at 2 a.m., they're the ones in my mind. Ones where it's someone's wedding and I've cut, you know, legs off or I've cut something out or be a group photo and half the group are not in focus. You can't redo those. But all of these have helped me to grow as a photographer, to get better. And hopefully showcasing these will make you feel better about going and revisiting some of your old ones as well. If you have any ideas for future tutorial Tuesdays that you would like to see as well, let me know down in the comments because I always want to make the stuff that you want to see. Otherwise, you can see a full list of all the kit we use for these videos and photos and all that kind of fun stuff down in the description. I will see you in the next video. But until then, as always, thanks for watching.